So before I start on this, uh, continuing on my painting, uh, guys wanted to, me to talk a little bit about my brushes or the brushes that I use and how I use them. Uh, I mainly have two sets of brushes, one from Corbin Hunter, he's got this uh, portraiture set, um, and one from Shadi Safadi, who's a pretty well-known, um, he does a lot of environments and all kinds of illustrations and stuff, but he's got a very versatile set. Let's see if I can find the, uh... I remember commenting somewhere where the files were. I'll see if I can find the actual link. Come on. Might have been in this one. Mm. Here. So Corbin Hunter's, let's just double check. Yeah. So I will throw the link to the two different brush sets that I use. That's not correct. Uh, you can click on Shadi Safadi's uh, website. There's a button here called Brushes, and that should bring you to a download page. Anyway, those are the two main brush sets that I use. I find myself most often drawing with just like two, maybe three of these brushes. Um, whenever I want to do any kind of line art or sketching, I tend to use this uh, Marlowe Silky But Deadly brush from Shadi Safadi a lot. It's it's not ideal, but I really like the fact that it's got this kind of, it's got a hard edge on one side and then a soft edge on the other. And I find that it gives my lines a little bit more character. It's also really good for painting stuff like wisps of hair and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, no brush is really perfect for any one task. And even though Corbin Hunter's uh, brush set is, it's called his portraiture brush set, it doesn't mean that it really uh, has to be limited to just that purpose. I always use his chalk smooth and chalk texture for pretty much everything. And he's got this hairbrush thing, which personally I rarely ever use for hair. It's a pretty, uh, it's actually identical to Shadi Safadi's Marlowe brush but it just has an additional texture applied to it. So it kind of like breaks it up a little bit. I find that makes it a little bit harder to use in most cases, but you know, every now and then there's a, uh, when I want a little bit of grit to my paintings, I'll use that. But the primary ones that I'll use, like I said, is, come on, go away. 
so there's chalk smooth chalk texture which is obviously just a variant to the other and these are really my big workhorses more often than not I will try and use chalk texture because when things are just too solid and too smooth there's not a whole lot of room for you to kind of play around with it. You can get these kinds of, uh, I mean, my pressure is sent, set to my uh, opacity and flow. So you can get a little bit of play with it when you uh, apply less uh, pressure. But when you use a textured brush that ha already has these little holes in there, so even when you pr press pretty hard, you get all these little bits and pieces that are just kind of flying all over. That kind of lack of control is what really gives a painting character. So within certain limitations, you want to, have to give up some of that control. And it helps a lot when you're blending colors. So if I wanted to put down red and let's say this, I could pretty easily find a mid ground where I've maybe used a little bit less uh, pressure and there's a lot of different variation here in terms of the mixture between the red and the blue. And if I were to continue blending it together, I would repeat the process using less pressure. So wherever you use less pressure, you're picking up, you're putting down less pigment, if you want to think in traditional terms. And it kind of gives you a place that you can color pick from. Like if you're using Photoshop or most programs, if you hold down Alt while using your brush, you'll immediately get the color picker. Uh, you can keep sampling and then blend them down. So that is pretty much one of the biggest things that people ask in terms of when they're just starting to get used to uh, um, painting in, in Photoshop or really in any program is how do you blend colors? It's primarily by manipulating the pressure of your uh, stylus. So that's full pressure. That's a little bit less. You can see that it's already blending with the white background, but if I really wanted to kind of soften the edge, I would have to go back and sample and apply the same thing. Back and forth. Although you do want to be careful when you blend too much, you can very easily muddy your edges. Uh, the strongest element of a painting is usually the decisions the artist makes in terms of where they keep their edges sharp and where they keep them smooth which is another reason that I really like this uh, brush for sketching, the Marlowe brush, is because it comes with a little bit of that already baked in where everywhere you draw, there's a little bit of smoothness right next to a, a hard edge and the juxtaposition, I don't know, it makes the lines feel a little bit smoother. Uh, I do use a few other uh, brushes, I think these two, the. PB Parrot Clean Pen and the Clean Comics. I think those are from Kyle's brushes, brush sets, which are, uh, they're a pretty popular um, uh, paid set that will try and mimic more traditional media. So I'm not really sure what specifically they're uh, trying to replicate aside from just an ink pen, but there's a little bit of, uh, I mean, they're, they're pretty similar. Uh, I think the PB Carrot one, or PB Parrot, whatever, has a more, it'll get skinnier with less pressure, whereas the other one has a bit more of a cap to it. But I don't use those too often. I only really leverage those when I'm doing critiques for people because I don't want to have a lot of the additional benefit of like pressure sensitivity, uh, messing with my opacity, letting me sketch a little bit more faintly. I don't want to be able to do that when I'm critiquing people's drawings or doing demos specifically for Drawbox because it, people will immediately call you out on like you're, you're making us use felt tip pens but you're using all the brushes that you can. So these specific ones really help me kind of tell people to shut up frankly because it's quite difficult to draw with this kind of unforgiving brush. Oh, I didn't know that Kyle's set was all included with uh, Photoshop CC now. That's pretty fantastic. Crimson Lust, what do you mean by uh, blend tools? 
because the only tool that I was using to blend here was uh, just the same brush that I was using to paint. I'm not using like smudge or blur or whatever. Like the only uh, play that I guess mathematics comes into is just the, the way that the texture is applied and that's really specific to the, uh, the brush tip that you're using. But I guess between different programs, some of the brushes work a little bit differently, but I don't know. A lot of the newer stuff that Photoshop has introduced over the last several versions with like, uh, you know, the variant tips and stuff. I don't even know if I have any of them here, but Stuff like this, I guess. No, nope, I don't know what, maybe I don't have any. But either way, the ones that, uh, the brushes that tend to track, like mimic traditional media, I've never really liked them because I've just kind of started out with a lot of uh, more exposure to Photoshop's old way of doing things, which was really, it treated digital media as its own sort of tool separate from a lot of the traditional stuff. Oh yeah, that's true. Uh, so like the smudge tool and whatever, I mean, you can get some good use out of it, especially if you use specific blend brushes that are kind of designed for smudging. But, oh, what the hell was that? That's not right. Oh, it's set to finger painting. But personally, I don't like the, uh, I've never liked the impact that you get from these smudge tools. I'll use them on occasion when I want to do something very specific, but usually I much prefer the kind of textured blending that you get from just using brushes. I, I do not say oot or boot. When I, uh, when I lived in LA briefly, literally everyone that I knew made fun of me but I couldn't hear it in my own voice. And even the people around me here, they have no idea. I think we all might say it ever so slightly, but... Hmm. Don't make me sensitive about it. Hey there, uh, Hyperborean. So, um... Wait, uh, hold on one second. I was saying on uh, Discord, I'm not actually sure if this person is watching or not, but uh, she was asking if I recommend that people start off only with a round brush when they're just getting into digital. And I, uh, a lot of people, like even I think Feng Zhu and people like that will really push for just start off with the absolute bare bones basics. And for the most part, that's true. But I feel like if you're gonna start off with just one brush, pick something chalky instead with a little bit of texture to it. I think that if you get too trapped in just using a simple round brush, it really takes away a lot of the, uh, the kind of dynamism that you can get used to using in small ways. Well, okay then, you are watching. Hmm. Anyway, so um, are there any specific questions about like just blending brushes and the brushes that I'm using? Because if not, I will just move on to uh, back to my illustration.
Well, if you guys have a question, feel free to ask and I'll jump back in. I should find some music. Is it any good, that gamer girl? I'll check it out after this. I'm actually um, recording my Twitch stuff to a different uh, audio track. So when I post this stuff on YouTube, I'll just replace the audio with something else. But, uh, like, you'll still hear my voice. Is that any better? It's funny, I didn't actually change any of my setting. Oh, maybe I did. Hmm. Let me know, okay, good. Yeah, I was just saying that I'm recording my vocal track and my audio track to, uh, I'm recording them separately. So that afterwards, when I edit the video before I upload it to YouTube, I can swap it out for something that still lets me make money off the content. I think this time it wasn't so much Windows' fault as much as um, when I'm using OBS to stream and when you switch from basic to advanced controls, it just saves them as completely different profiles. So if you switch to advanced, it seems to just forget all the other tweaking that I was doing, which is kind of stupid. And I was switching it to advanced so that I could separate the tracks. All right, I'll push it up a little bit more. There we go. Honestly, I kind of wish that Twitch would let you stream two separate audio tracks so that the people viewing it could mute your music if they thought your taste sucked, but still listen to you talk.
One thing that I often find to be challenging is like I will always paint. So I'll start off with a pretty loose sketch because if I'm too neat and tidy about it, my brain just kind of shuts down and refuses to work outside of those lines. So I keep things more vague and kind of suggestive, except for the kind of the more important and key areas. Ah, no. I've had enough of this song. Anyway, um, I focus, I keep it all loose, as, as loose as I can, except for key design points like the armor and stuff that I want to, I don't want to mess up on. Um, but I will paint directly on top of it and I'll just keep adding more and more layers. And the, tr the kind of tricky and annoying thing for me is that sometimes these sketch lines will just kind of linger. And I don't know if it's a psychological thing, but it's like I'm constantly trying to bury them, but they keep popping up wherever I, I've forgotten to deal with them. Like here, there's a uh, there's all kinds of sketch lines in this area. He's still mostly sketch, and you're just kind of laying down the color until they just go the fuck away. And I have a habit of kind of being pretty scatterbrained with how I paint. Although I think that's actually a good thing because I never noodle too much in one area. But at the same time, I will be covering up some area of sketch and then I'll forget about it. And I'll come back and I'm like, why are you still not covered?
Are you sad because of uh, uh, Chris Cornell? So maybe I shouldn't follow it up with Lincoln Park. Yeah, same here. I can't remember what was the other song that uh, not song but band that he was a part of. I've only really ever known him through Audio Slave. Soundgarden was the one I was thinking of. Never heard of Temple of the Dog.
I think out of all of them, the only one that really made me all that sad was Chris Cornell. Although Chester Bennington, because of his connection with Cornell, kind of made me sad too. Because I believe for him, it was on Cornell's birthday. And they were quite close. Their cellos makes it all different. And there's three of them. I think they'll be fine.
It's a uh, break of reality. I haven't actually heard anything else that they've done. Um, let's see. Doesn't look like they uh, do our rendition of that piece. Although, what's the group that you're thinking of? Because I would love to hear a cello version of that. I'm noodling far too much. I'm not really sure what I'm after here. I think when it comes to digital painting, you have to be really willing to just kind of destroy a chunk of your painting. If something isn't working, it can be kind of difficult to really pinpoint what the issue is. So sometimes going nuclear is really just a more time efficient solution. This band, uh, Apocalyptica, was the first concert I'd ever been to. And really one of the only concerts I've ever been to.
I have not. Oh, maybe I have heard parts of it. One important thing to keep in mind is that, uh, I feel like I say that a lot. Anyway, um, what tends to trump everything else is composition. And composition is just a matter of how all of this is arranged as a series of 2D shapes on your flat canvas. And it kind of contradicts everything that I teach about form and uh, construction and all of that, thinking in three dimensions. When you're working on an illustration, you're really just breaking up a usually a rectangular frame into s other interesting 2D shapes. And if you get too caught up in the realism of things and forget about the shapes that you're trying to make, you can end up with a composition that feels kind of boring and flat. But if you're always 
thinking back to the shapes that you're making and trying to fit reality into that kind of uh, um, setup so that you leverage certain realistic things to cast shadows in a certain way to, uh, to just work within what you're trying to produce, then you can achieve an interesting uh, composition and that'll have the most impact. So if you look at this line that I added here, like this sh shadow, I added it right there. There's really nothing casting that that we can see in here. So there's no co concrete reason for me to add that, except when you start thinking about composition. Now I can certainly argue that there's probably a shadow being cast there by some object that we don't see, but um, even if there wasn't, I would go ahead and add something if it had to be visible, just so that I could get a shadow that cut across a certain way. And as you practice and you kind of get used to the way the different shapes balance against each other and how different angles cut across in a way that kind of feels good, um, you'll build up a sense of this is, this is the kind of shape that I need in this place. And it does take practice to get used to that. But uh, eventually you'll, you'll think more about which shapes are floating around where and what kind of impact they're having and how you can achieve those shapes while working within reality. At the end of the day, if you have to kind of skirt the bounds of reality, go for it. Realism is only, you know, it'll only take you as far as it can. But if you want to make something that has a lot of impact to it, then, you know, break the rules when you understand how to do so. Scylla, are you in your car again? I totally forgot about this hand. I can't remember what it's called in English, something like Call of the Wilds or something. Something to do with wilds. Yeah, the first time that I heard it, it was in uh, uh, Finnish, 
And so I think that one had the biggest impact on me, so I always come back to this version. The other one sounds kind of off to me. Doesn't it have an, an actual English version though? Or am I just imagining things? Hmm. There's a good chance that I'm just imagining it. Nah, it's definitely just instrumental. We are just crazy. You can't be that old. Well, I can tell you that streaming and worrying about a bunch of people watching me definitely makes me worse. So what's the worst a little music can do? Well, there you go. But then again, I was calling um, Sven, what was it? An old fart and something else that was no better. So maybe we're all just old farts. And we're going senile. No, that was, uh, yeah, that was era.
I swear, I realized that I had forgotten to really touch this hand at all. And I was like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to paint this hand now. And no more than two minutes later, I was off painting something else. Two minutes or 20 seconds for all I remember. That's a weird way of putting that. Yeah, it's a little weird, drawing straight away from you. I mean, physically, your body should not be agreeing with that. that pain thing. Don't bring your masochism into drawing, it won't help. No, we already decided no Lincoln Park because uh, I'd already played Audio Slave and we don't want to get extra sad. You heard her. Stretch, stretch, stretch. I should probably take heed of that. I certainly am not. If I was eating cheese puffs, I'd be shoving my face into the bowl. That's the only reason I'm not eating them. I don't want that to be captured on stream. Well, define hurts, because if it's sore and like throbbing, then maybe you're just using it too much and need to give it a break. But if it's actually a sharp pain, you're probably doing something wrong.
I refuse to be objectified on my own goddamn stream. Yeah, just uh, give it a bit of a break, I guess. Oh, sure, we'll listen to that. <laughs> Fight them. Just wait until we start preaching the lifestyle of the box. Like a box has six sides, your life too must have six sides. I don't know what they are, but one of them is definitely drawing boxes. And none of them are a social life. <laughs> the vertices of life. <laughs> that is beautiful. Also, yes, D&D &D is entirely acceptable.
I mean, I might be. After all, if you injure yourself, then you can't do the homework, and then I don't get homework submissions. <laughs> it's a win-win in that I win twice. Look, either some of them lose their arms or I lose my mind from doing too many goddamn critiques. Pick one. I don't know how to take that. I can't comment on that. I'm not legally allowed to divulge our national secrets. Murica's hat. You are our pants. And we wear you one leg at a time. Drive safe. And don't fight any gators. Just go straight home. Sounds like a challenge. Nobody wants to watch me wear pants. There is, uh, when I built my first computer, the case that I bought was this massive thing. It was called a Cooler Master Half 932. And it was like solid steel, just this massive thing. And when it came in its box, it was so solidly packed into this box that removing it was a big chore. And at the time, since it was the first computer that I'd ever made, I was having a friend of mine in a different city kind of walk me through it over webcam. And it was on the webcam of this shitty little laptop 
And so the laptop was on the ground because that's where I was building the computer. And I was trying to get the case out of this box and like pulling with my hands wasn't working. So eventually I kind of got on my ass and used my feet as leverage against the box, trying to pull the case with my hands and pushing back on the box with my feet. And my friend, all he saw on his webcam was me just go flying off across the screen just as uh, I lost my grip. And by that point, all of his friends were gathered around the computer watching. It's a pity that none of you got to see that because that's never gonna happen again. God damn it, not everything in my life is about boxes. Uh, they really need to start shipping things to me in cardboard pyramids. <laughs> that sounds convenient. That's kind of part of the design. Some people see a little Sailor Moon crescent. Some people see a smiley face. What you see really is up to you.
in a way that's something I've always liked about the power of kind of conveying a scene in just one frame. It leaves so much room for uh, like you, you're trying to get your own story across, but at the same time, there's so much room for other people to start telling their own stories and interpreting things their own way. Even, I mean, it doesn't relate that much to the dumb little smiley face on her forehead, but it's all just open interpretation. And once it's out there, you cannot control what people see. And it kind of gives it an extra dimension. Yeah, exactly. For example, there was this one illustration that I did a long time ago. You know, what's going on is really up to you. You can all just figure it out for yourselves. <laughs> That's really good, Sven. It started off as a study of uh, two people kissing on a beach. Kind of got away from me a little bit. don't think he's kissing that's I think that's the only explanation I should probably add a disclaimer to the website that uh, you know if you complete the course and find that you can only draw boxes, the website is called Draw a Box. I mean, I don't know what you were expecting. I take no responsibility for uh... <laughs> 
I just thought it would be popular in the age of Minecraft. Everyone wants to learn how to draw things made out of boxes. Look, it's not like I ripped off a bunch of old people from their pensions or anything. You guys will recover. That kind of sounds like talk from someone who's looking for a beating. We all know what a masochist you are, so. Is that how much you've given me? For the gift of boxes, I think you can give me a little bit more. <laughs> Don't draw box .com. It's one of my favorites too. I used to listen to it and uh, The Escapist on repeat over and over and over. How was the convention?
Ships tried to pass in the night once over here in Halifax and then the fucking city exploded. It's been over a century, but we're still kind of raw about that. <laughs> I didn't even grow up here. I, I just remember watching shit about the Halifax explosion on TV when I was a kid. All these heritage moment things that we uh, have in Canada. As a nation, I think we're pretty salty about the uh, biggest man-made explosion until the uh, dropping of the bombs on Nagasaki and Hiroshima. I'm still Canadian. I just didn't grow up in Halifax. <laughs> it's my outrage to have. I mean, technically my family was still in East Africa, I think, at the time. Or maybe India, I'm not sure. Haligonian. It's called... Ugh. Not the Mounties. They're so polite. I can't stand it. Actually, were you around when I told you the story about the time that the cops broke down my apartment door a couple years ago? Yeah, I hear that a lot. <laughs> I, uh, I've had some roommate trouble in the past. I, uh, I lived for a while with this girl named Lisa and, uh, I really shouldn't tell the story live. I'll tell it again, uh, on the chat sometime. Yeah, I, I shouldn't tell it now. No, that was, damn it, I shouldn't say people's names. Um, that was the Israeli girl that I lived with uh, for three months in LA. Actually, she's...
She works at Disney Animation Studios now. So she's stealing their butter. Christ. The Tale of Lisa is one with many chapters and all kinds of insanity. Oops. Oh, this cat? There should be cats in all drawings forever. I'm thinking that that might be the cat in, um, where is this? Mm, where is that painting? I might make it this kitty over here. It's kind of a dick. It's funny, the way that Scylla usually puts it is that my life is somehow frequently dumpster fire adjacent. I tend to walk through and beside a bunch of dumpster fires without really getting scathed. What the fuck is this? Yeah. Wait, that's not it. Uh, where'd it go? Maybe I closed it. Uh... That doesn't look like a cat to you? It's kitty cat. Mm. Now I'm all distressed. Or did you mean this one? Okay, fair enough. <laughs> so a little boxy, god damn it. Uh, my life is a meme. I have a lot of layers, but I paint as though it's just one, so I'll never kind of go back to an earlier layer and work on it. I'll just keep stacking and stacking and stacking. That kind of gives me the freedom to say, select a huge chunk and copy and paste it and then mess around with it. And then paint all this crap out again.
I feel like having the freedom to kind of be fluid and just go with the flow, it gives you a lot more uh, confidence when you're painting. Shows I have much to learn about kitty cats, or at least their heads. So I didn't, well, what I did was I copied merged, which uh, in Photoshop is control shift C, and then I paste it in place, which is control shift V. Whatever program you're using probably has some function for that. I think I'm going to uh, shut off the stream at the, at the end of the song. Uh, how long have I been streaming for? Almost two hours now. <laughs> I find it really weird that people are willing to watch me for this long. It, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. don't feel like I was nearly as productive as I was uh, last night, which is a bit of a pity because I'm kind of ga trying to gauge how quickly I can churn this stuff out, but today was just, it's like moving through molasses. Maybe I'm just tired from work or something. <laughs> yeah, maybe it's just your fault distracting me from my work. Although I guess I'll have to get used to that too, because part of the idea here is that I, I want to stream all of the Orc and Gnome illustrations I do as a sort of, uh, what's the word, marketing ploy.
Oh, well, song's over. Fuck. <laughs> More or less. So, yeah, I'm gonna call it quits now. Thanks for watching as long as you guys have, and I hope you had fun. Good night.